Mr. Um, Lydia, yes. why don't you give me your full name, your maiden name, your date of birth, and where you were born, and then tell me your uh, parents' name, your brothers and sisters, and then your grandparents, if you can, whatever you can remember. Yes. Okay. Sure. All right. Well, no? what's, the, what's your date of birth? It's uh, 1907, the 4th of August. 4th of July, baby. 4th of August. Oh, August. Oh, okay. I was two months off. <laughs> okay. All right. And where were you born? In, uh, it was West De Pere at that time. Were you born at home? Yes. Okay. And, uh, oh, look. Give me your full name and your, your maiden name. Lydia Summers Cornelius Denny. Okay. Now, your brothers and sisters. The f first one was Eddie, Eddie Edward Summers, and then Philip and Banger, and then there was a, a now I forgot. Um, Sally, and she died when she was two years old. Milton, Elmer, and Austin. It's a big family. Ten. And where were you? Were you the oldest? Oh no, I. Eddie was the oldest. Well, and I, Mamie. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention Mamie, me. And then Lillian. Okay, so you were about in the middle then? No, I'm second to the youngest. Second to the youngest. Oh, oh wow. All right, uh, give us your mother's name and her maiden, their maiden name and your father. Elizabeth Wheelock. And then she married Taylor Summers. I don't think they had middle names either. <coughs> okay. Uh, do you remember the names of your grandparents? Uh, my father's mother was Rebecca Cornelius, and the father was Daniel Summers. And my mother's parents were Mary Baird and John Wheelock. Now, where was your, uh, do you remember the, the homesteads of your grandparents? Oh, they lived on... Um, what do you call those roads now? I'm so, I'm so forgetful. Uh, it's a line between Brown and Outagamie County, County Line Road. Kind of you? To, on going toward De Pere. And then, well, they had a nice home and a, and a farm out there, the, the summers. And my mother's folks, do you remember where we used to live? We had a log house on uh, the road that goes from Silver Summit to Chicago Corners. Oh, yes, yes. The, there's that a Fish Creek Road? No. There, there was just a crossroad there, the first crossroad from Silver Summit. Oh, that's Lambie Road, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And we lived in a log house there. Oh, right near the corner there? Well, it was down to the north. Oh, is that uh, where Austin uh, had a place there? Was that Austin or your brother? No. No? No, that's okay. where my mother lived. Okay. After my mother and father were separated. She okay. bought that place over there. Okay. And that's where we grew up. That was where you grew up? Mm hmm. Okay. <clears throat> what kind of, um, did they have a, <coughs> excuse me, did they have a, um, a farm then? Well, it was a 16 acre, it was a little farm. Little farm. My, my, my brother Milton always had some cows, maybe three, and uh, horses, enough to work up the place always. And what was your job? Go, you go to school, but otherwise just washing dishes and help scrubbing the floors. 
Did you have electricity and running water then? No, Elect uh, kerosene lamps. Did you have a well or did you have to haul we, your water? We had to haul water from the springs, but we had a lot of springs around there. There was a, uh, the, the creek ran through right, yeah. right there. Mm -hmm. We used to haul water from the creek for washing. Oh, I hauled water up the hill I don't know how many years. Your mother, did she uh, just, did she work out or did she just uh, work oh, at home? She worked at home. My brothers helped us stay alive and they used to come home they were lumberjacks mostly and they come home and uh, work up the place plant it all up and then he'd buy a couple of pigs milton wood and we in the fall then they'd butcher the pigs and put up we had those great big barrels then they were they were that high and about that big around. And we they'd fill up a barrel of sauerkraut and a barrel of pickles and a barrel of salt pork. And then they kept us in flour and other stuff that we had to get, that we had to buy. So we yeah. never got hungry. Now, I, you know, I put up pickles and I put up sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. But I've never put up salt pork. How do you do that? Well, as far as I know, they just, uh, they killed the pig. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, well, they cleaned it all off, and then they cut it up. And then they um, put, I don't know just how, how they salted it, but it was salted into a barrel. And so we had, we had salt pork all the time. It was a treat when we had beef and we had our own chickens. So now and then we had chicken for a treat. But I don't know, we never worried or, and we never were hungry. When we made toast, we just, we had one of those old time stoves, flat top, and then there was, it went up, that was the oven. And maybe you've seen that old time stove. You have a water reservoir on the side? No, not this one. No? No. We did have it after a while with the reservoir on the side. But when we made toast, we put them on the, on the top of the stove, the slices of bread. and. Well, we just turned it over and got both sides. That was our toast. And, oh, uh, let me see. When you do your ironing, you use the, oh, we put had, those on the stove? Yeah, too? just a plain iron we put on the stove. And, well, my mother worked hard. She done all of that. My sister and I went to Silver Summit School. And I think I was about, I was seven years old when I first went to Wittenberg. I went there, my Aunt Sarah worked up there. Otherwise well, I might not have gone to school. What was your aunt's last name? House. And uh, she was real good to me. She, she'd buy me new clothes and send me home in the, in the spring. And, well, you have to ask me questions or I'll not, I'll not be able to tell you. <laughs> oh, that's okay. You're doing all right. You're doing all right. You, uh, you went to Silver Summit. Yeah. And, um, but I first went to Wittenberg. Oh, you went to Wittenberg first? Yeah, when okay. I was seven years old. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you and your sister? Yeah. Now, tell me... <clears throat> I guess to, uh, try to tell me that what you remember the first day that you you know you started out. What was? Can you remember what was in your mind? When Seven I went years to school, old, you know that's pretty small. Uh, well, I didn't know how to talk e English at all. I might know how to say hello. That's all. But uh, they didn't let us talk 
Oneida there. But your first day when you and uh, you and your sister, you got ready to go, how old was your sister? About Was she older or younger? That was Mimi. And she was almost five years older than me. Okay. Now, um, oh, how did you... Uh, how did you go up there to uh, Wittenberg? On a train. On a train. Uh huh. And you, you catch the train in Oneida then? Yeah. And then we had to change in New London. Was there just the two of you? Yeah. Oh no, there was a bunch going. F uh, a bunch of children from Oneida? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, then you had a, like a chaperone? Oh yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Bell was his name. He was from the school then? He was from the government school here. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and, and do you remember any of the other ones that were with you on the train that you went? Were some of your friends? That's one thing I can't remember. Okay. Now, you you went with Mr. Bell uh -huh. your first day. Yeah. Was it kind of scary? took us scary? to school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Must have been kind of scary that first day, wasn't it? I never got scared. No? No. I... I just look forward to everything that was going to happen. It was just, and, uh, well, it was nice, but my sister was kind of rough, and I didn't know how to talk English, you know. I didn't understand it. And the, the first morning we were there, we had to go into a big washroom and wash up. And, of course, I was kind of small, and so I kind of waited for my sister to wait on me. And she says, unsnarl your hair. I never forgot that, and I didn't know what she said, and she didn't stop to tell me in Indian either. So, when she got through with her cleaning, then she started working on me, and boy, I understood what she meant when she said, unsnarl your hair. <laughs> we had little tin combs, and boy, they, she sure pulled my hair, and I had long hair at that time. So, they wasn't long, and they cut my hair and they didn't let us talk one night at all. They punished us somehow when they caught us talking one night. And for us kids, it was fun to talk one night, but don't get caught. Now, how long did you stay when you went up? You... Well, I come home every spring, but... Uh, what about Christmas time? Did you come home at Christmas time? No, no. Oh, okay. Uh, I guess I was there about three years. It must have been three years because I went to the government school when I was ten. Uh, Out here. By Norbert Hill? Yeah. Center? Okay. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what made the change? Is that just where you wanted to go at the time? Yeah. In Wittenberg? We didn't even have to go to school at that time. And my mother wasn't the kind to push us away from her. She wanted us as close to her all the time. I wish I had gone more to, to school because I was, I was good in school. But that's... That I, well, I went to work when I was 14. From, uh, you went to the government school after Wittenberg then. Yeah. And uh, that was, Then I, you just, w w did you go to school there and stay there, or did you come home? No, we stayed there. At the uh, government, government school? school. Mm -hmm. But you could come home more often than when... Uh, but we didn't. No? We stayed right through to the nine months. And then after that, I went to uh, the Silver Summit for a couple of years. I think I... I finished eighth grade when I was in Toma. I must have went back there. <laughs> and that's as far as I went. Tell me, uh, tell me the difference between uh, Wittenberg and the, the government school. Was there any difference or are they pretty much the same? Well, at Wittenberg, there was all kinds of tribes. And here at the government school, there was all in the Oneidas. What would you, if you had to guess, what would you guess the enrollment was at the government school at that time? Oh, I have no idea. And you were, what, about 10 years old, you say? Yeah. Okay, so that you were born in 1907. 19... 07, so that would be about 1917 that you were going to school at the government school. Here. Yeah, it was during the First World War. Okay. okay. And 
Oh, I was so happy when my brother Elmer came to school to get us in the spring. He had his soldier's uniform on yet. So he served in the First World War? Oh, yeah. Him and Milton. I, I had four brothers that were in the Army at that time. Oh, at the, in the First World War? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. There was Philip and Banger, Milton and Elmer. My mother had four stars on her flag. I see you have an auxiliary uh, flag in your... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, my husband, my last husband, uh, he was an army man too, but in the second... Second World War. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, let's go back to um, Silver Summit. Uh, once you left the government school, then you went to Silver Summit. You know, that's where I'm mixed up. Okay. Because but Silver Summit, you went to school every day, back and forth. Yeah, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. we'd go home for okay. lunch. Was there a lot of, about how many kids were in your... Uh, in the school? In the school at Silver Summit. Maybe 10 or 12? Oh, there was a lot of them. Oh. There must have been maybe 50. Now, was that a two-room? Were the, yeah. the upper grades and the lower grades? Yeah. And you finished there, yeah. Uh, and up to that time, you just had chores and things like that around the house to do. Uh. Well, I went out to work when I was fourteen, so I didn't work home very much. Okay, but what was it? I mean, uh, at home now, what what church did you your mother attend? A Methodist church. Methodist church. Mm -hmm. And um, what what was a Sunday like when you were at home before you went off to work? Well, it was always the same. Uh, my mother would give us a bath early in the morning. We had to, the boys would haul a tub upstairs and filled with warm water. And then Lil and I would have to take a bath in the same water. <laughs> and then she'd give us clean clothes and then she'd take us to church. Every Sunday, uh, every Sunday was the same way. And after church, did we come you have home a big meal? Oh, we always had a nice meal on Sunday. That's the time we had our treats. We had maybe beef or we had maybe chicken. But we always had a nice dinner. And when Bangor was home, he used to like to cook. So when we come home from church, we had a nice big dinner. And can you remember what a, uh, tell me what a Christmas would be like, one of the Christmases you remember? Uh, <clears throat> Milton, he, one time, there was a hole around a stovepipe, and we could look down, <laughs> and we could see him running around there filling our stockings. <laughs> oh, we had a nice life. Well... Who was in charge of getting the Christmas tree? One of the brothers? One of the boys. And when would they set that up? Did you set that up the night before Christmas? We never or? trimmed it up very much. Oh. Mostly just popcorn and whatever we could think of. And so as far as the tree went, we didn't think much of it. We, we liked what we had in our socks. I see. Now, okay, then it was Christmas. What about New Year's? We went hoyani. Okay. Uh, Tell me about that. Well, after breakfast we'd get all dressed warm and then we'd go down the road, go to the homes and holler hoyan in front of the door. And they'd give us something, maybe cookies or donuts or or apple or something like that. But we never worried about pins in the apples. <laughs> now, what did uh, what did your parents tell you the reason for Hoyan? Or did anybody did you ever f no? What it was nobody all about? ever told us. No, we just went out and begged. <laughs> did uh, have you since that time? Have you have you ever found out what Hoyan was all about? No, I don't think so. I can't remember. But what does it mean in Oneida? Hoyan is donut. Hoyan means donut? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. 
What about Fourth of July? Do you remember anything about Fourth of July? Oh, we always joined the crowds. Usually at the parish hall, they had a big doings there, and we'd go there and have fun. Was the band uh, Oneida Band? Yeah, the Oneida Band used to play. Okay, let's go to the, uh, you left uh, you left Silver Summit, and you started to go to work. Like I said, I'm kind of mixed up with uh, Silver Summit and Toma, but I know I graduated in Toma, the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't go to school after that. I went to work in Green Bay. Okay, tell us about that. Well, I, I used to help, I was help in the kitchen. In, and in, in, I, uh, uh, did you work at a hotel or did you work in somebody's home? Yeah, or? in a hotel. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. How did you get to work? I don't remember. I know a lot of them used to take the bus from Oneida, but... Uh, but it probably wasn't uh, any let's at the see. Time. I think we lived right in the hotel. Oh, you stayed right there. Yeah. Okay. Right. <clears throat> when you were growing up, do um, you remember any kind of crafts or any kind of recipes or things that your mother or your parents done that uh, you participated in? All um, the Indian foods with corn. Did you, cornbread you, and corn soup, you made that? Yeah, and people liked my cornbread and corn soup. <laughs> I had letters from uh, Mercy Hill from Detroit. She, she used to tell me, make cornbread, she said, I'll buy all the cornbread you can make. I made 12 loaves that time, and she bought them all. How did you and start out doing that? Uh, did, was that the teaching from your mother? Yeah. She taught us how to do that, and then we made that green cornbread. Did you ever hear of that? Tell me about it. Uh, you just grate the corn off the cob, and after you get a bowl of uh, corn, green corn, that's, and then you put it in a pan. My mother used to put cabbage leaves in the pan to give it just a little different flavor. And then she'd put the corn in there and bake it. You can put a little salt in it if you want to, but I don't think the Indians used much salt a long time ago. And if you want to try it, you'll have it every year. It's real good. When you get done baking it, then what? Uh... You, you just cut it in squares and eat it with butter. What about the, uh, what about the cornbread? You know, what people tell me is that uh, they have a difficult time keeping it together. No, no. You know what I mean? You gotta have boiling water. Mm -hmm. So you gotta put your hand in cold water before you pick up the dough. You use boiling water in mixing the dough too. Or you put this uh, colored beans into it and stir it all well. Then you put your hands in cold water and then pick up the dough and make a patty and drop it into boiling water. If you do that, it won't fall apart. I know my sister-in-law made cornmeal mush. I mean, she wanted to make these patties too. <laughs> and it was, the water wasn't boiled, wasn't hot enough. So she put it into water and it became mush. Mm -hmm. Mush. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now tell me about the uh, the corn soup. How did you did you use ashes or did you use lime? At one time we used ashes, but now uh, I use I use soda toward the end. You don't. Is that just easier to uh, work with, or easier to get? Uh, no. We used to take a. They call it a corn basket, and you put the corn, you throw the corn into this, that is the cooked corn. And that, that cooked corn takes about, oh, maybe a couple hours. Then you put it in a basket, and 
we used to take it down to the creek. The creek was nice and clean at that time. And we'd wash it, put the basket in the water and wash it up and down like that. And after that, then you can boil it over again until the hulls come off. <coughs> after the hulls come off, then, then you can mix it with pork and uh, beans and cook it maybe another hour. It takes all day to make that. Making me hungry here. <laughs> How do you say that? Gadung kalyaks? What gadung kalyak? Yeah. What gadung kalyak? That's I'm hungry. Sadung kalyaks. Sadung kalyaks, that you're hungry. Okay, okay. Gadung kalyaks. Gadung kalyaks, that, that's you. <laughs> you're telling me you're hungry. Now, um, when you were growing up, did, uh, did your parents have uh, their own medicines? Or did they rely on, uh, you know, one of the doctors around here? Or how did they handle things like that when somebody got sick? I think we had one doctor in my lifetime in the home. Who was that? Dr. Paulus. And Elmer had measles, I think it was. And they had him come over to the house. Now, Dr. Paulus, that had to be before uh, Dr. Hill came into oh, the yeah. community, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, did your mother um, have any kind of special medicines that she used? Well, we used to use Sloan's liniment and uh, spirits of camphor. We used to have that in the house all the time. We had no aspirin or anything like that. If we had a stomach ache, she'd put a few drops of camphor in a glass of water, and we'd drink that. That would take care of that. And the Sloan cinnamon, sometimes when we had a cold or something, they'd take a teaspoonful of sugar and put a couple drops of cinnamon on the sugar, and we had to dissolve that in our mouth. And that was, that was good for our colds. And then we had, uh, I can't think of the names of the herbs now. Mm, we used to go out and pick herbs, and then we'd be drinking that all the time. Nice and warm. Put it into a tea of some sort, I yeah. suppose. Mm -hmm. What about this Dr. Paulus? Can you tell me something about him? I, well, I guess he was a good doctor. And I'm not sure now if he was a doctor in the First World War. Uh, I believe he was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is that, did he practice out of what they call the old hospital? Uh, I never knew anything about the old hospital. See, the things on the, on the other end of Oneida, they were really separate from the people on this end. And, and especially us little kids, we didn't, we never got down there until after we were married. And well, why do you think that is? We just, we had horses and buggies and they didn't want to hitch up the horse and buggy for a little trip like that. They used to walk down there. My mother and I and my sister, we used to walk to Morgan's from up here. And well, we thought nothing of walking those days. My mother always said, do a lot of walking. She said, you'll be better off. And they're wondering here, how I can get around so good. And I guess that's it. Is, is that where you uh, did the majority of your shopping with your mother no. uh, in, when in the boys, When Milton would come home from the woods, he'd, he'd uh, hitch up the horse and buggy and take my mother to town. Where did they sh usually go? Bill Hawks's. Where's that at? The pier. Is that where a lot of Oneidas went to? Huh? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you go along when they went? No. Uh -huh. No, us kids always stayed home. In, in terms of uh, corn soup and cornbread, that was a regular, that was not a treat at your house, that was just something that you had regularly at, uh, at mm -hmm. home. Yeah, most always. And when what? did you start 
developing a reputation for, uh, you know, making cornbread and corn soup. No, that was after I was married. And, uh, I don't know. I just, I just made it. <laughs> and people came, right? Oh yes. <clears throat> I make a batch of cornbread, and no matter how big. One time I made forty loaves, and it was all gone in half an hour. Now you went to work in Green Bay, and you worked at the hotel. Mm -hmm. And how long did you, how long did you work there? I can't tell you. I don't know. Was that, but it wasn't long. And what happened after that then? Did you, um, did you start raising a family, or did you? Uh, I go? think I went to. Uh, I think I went to Toma at that time after I got to working in Green Bay. I'm getting things mixed up. That's all right. That's all right. And. I worked, uh, when I came back from Green Bay, yeah, that, I came back from Green Bay and my sister was gone to Toma. I said, I want to go there too. So I went. And that's where, that's how I was there. And <clears throat> and let's see what, what happened after that. Oh, somehow, my two brothers were working in Milwaukee then, and they came home. And I told them, I said, I'd like a job somewhere. And, well, they said, you can come along with us if you want to, and we'll take you to the employment office, and you can get a job there. So that's what happened. And I got to be, a, I went to work in a, a TV sanatorium. The uh, the superintendent of the sanatorium came into the employment office while I was there, and, and that's what she told the lady there that she wanted somebody to work to work there as a dishwasher. So I went there, and I washed dishes for a couple of days. Then they asked me if I want to be a practical nurse, and. Then there was a German nurse there. She was from the first war on the Berlin on the German side, and she took me over. And I, I she taught me all of what the nurses do, and even to take take care of the dead people. And af oh, after a couple of years, then the uh, superintendent said. You can call yourself practical nurse. And, oh, I really enjoyed that work. And on the, in the summertime, they let me be the night nurse. But the superintendent's apartment was on the same floor. She said, anytime you need help, come and get me. So. Oh, I had an, it was all right, nothing happened. I didn't need her. I used to give up medicines and stuff like that. And I worked there, I don't remember how many years, oh, three or four or something like that. Then I got married. Oh, I worked for, as a nurse for single people that were sick in the home. I worked that way for a while. Then I got married. Then after that, I I had children. Started raising a family. Yeah. I would have had five, but two of them died, and I've got three. What's What's their names? June, June Marie, Donna Faye, and Ira Pearson. Cornelius's, yeah. Now, tell me about uh, <clears throat> during the course of, of uh, you know, growing up, did, what was it like when they had a wake? Do you remember those? Yeah. They used to bring the body home, and they sang all night. People brought food, 
and they, when it was around midnight, they'd stop singing and have a, have a lunch. And the pallbearers always had black bands on their arm. And um, well, they just sang all night long. What about the, the singers, did you participate with the singers? No, I, at that time I didn't. But I sang with the singers later on. And you, you don't sing anymore? No, I can't. My voice has changed. Just think, all this is going on a going to be on my record. Oh boy, I never thought of that until just now. <laughs> I'd, have I'd have tried to do better. <laughs> oh, I think you're doing real good. You're doing great. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, again, you know, what we want to do is we want to get this on record for the tribe, but I'm also going to give you a copy. Oh, wonderful. So that you can have it for your family. That's good. And you can do with it what you want. You yeah. Know? And, uh, uh, but, uh, so the the wigs have changed quite a bit since that time then. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, I guess so. I often say that. It's a good thing the old folks get out of the way because we can't keep on learning. The younger people are learning so much, like the computers and all that stuff. We can't keep up with that. Even the bread making nowadays, they've got a machine. They do? Why, sure. I didn't know that. Oh, yes, you did. For the cornbread? No, no. Oh. The <clears throat> yeast bread. Oh, yeah, that yeah. I've heard, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it doesn't taste as good as my grandma's, though. <laughs> well, I like my bread, too. Uh, it's really like this new machine that makes bread. It makes a good bread. But just it isn't really the same. It doesn't taste the same. Oh, no. you got to get your hands in there to make it the, right. the way the way it is. That's right. If you, the way you want it. Now, before I forget, what you were going to tell me is about the family reunions. What what happens at those? We, when did you start those? Uh, I think we had the either the second or the third one, and oh, we have lots of fun, and it's a much bigger family than I thought. Uh, we rented the Boy Scout house in Seymour last summer. And there was two long tables and they were all full. I, I, then I first knew that the Summers family is really a big family. Now, there's, I ha, is it all right to tell you about my family today? Sure. I have a niece, Goldie, she died. And my first cousin, Minnie, Minnie Hill. She just passed away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those two, and see, Minnie's my first cousin, and Goldie's my niece. So we're waiting for their funerals this weekend. Mm -hmm. The wake is tonight. Yeah, for yeah. Minnie. Mm -hmm. And Friday night for Goldie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but tell me about the uh, family reunion. How did, how did it get started? Well, uh, Milton's kids, you know, he had nine girls and three boys. Well, I just know the boys, I don't know the girls. So. Yeah, there's nine of them. There's two of them dead, though. And they started it. And I think it was even bigger this last year. The first time, that, I don't know if it was the first time, but it, it was one of those times. Um, they had an Indian dance. Or did I tell you about that already? No, no. They had a, the Indian dancers come there. And the head one asked me to dance. And I said, I went around. I didn't want to because I was afraid. I Well, I didn't know how. Yeah. And I went around once and I told him, I said, that's all. <laughs> and well, but it was fun. And. Well, we had lots to eat. They gave out presents for the oldest one and something for the youngest one, I guess. Who was the oldest one? Oh. 
Yeah. Now, you've, you've had three of them. You're going to have another one coming up? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've got the people named already to start the next one. That'll be... But we're going to have it three years apart now. Three years apart. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'll be here for the next one. <laughs> eh, you never know. No, you don't. No, you don't know. I'll, I'll try to be here, but <clears throat> you never know. Uh, there was a little something I no, wanted to see, but I can't, I can't. Now it left me and I can't think of it. Well, I'm hoping that uh, the tape that we're going to be giving you, you can show that. Well, Roosevelt was the start of the New Deal, wasn't he? And I don't know much about it. I know they, they were having hard times when he became president. And he did a lot of good in this world, in this country. And uh, I was always a Democrat anyway. Well, did the New Deal, isn't that what they used to call the homes out here? Uh, the people that got New Deal homes? Yeah. Do you know anything about that? Well, my father-in-law used to be one of the head ones building them. What was his name? Ira. And what did, uh, what, can you tell me something about that? What did that, how did that come about? Was that with the tribal council or separate or? There was much of anything organized, I don't think, at that time. The, I really don't know anything about it, I guess. Do you know who was on the town board or uh, who was the, like the, uh, the assessor or the constable or was there uh, the chairman of the? I, I really don't know, but I know Ben Jordan used to be a constable and the assessor used to be, I think his name was Richard Paulus. I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. What about Anderson Cornelius? Did he, uh, be, was he involved in some way? Uh, it seems like he, he was telling somebody his story and I can't remember who the person is. But I really don't know much about Anderson either. Okay, so you didn't uh, participate in any of the tribal government uh, no, at council that, meetings or anything like that? No. We had, my husband usually worked in Milwaukee and we lived out here and we didn't have no way to get around. We weren't the kind to walk to places. When, when did you live in Milwaukee? Uh, we missed that part. My two girls were born in Milwaukee. I can't tell you, let's see. Um, I don't remember. Donna was born in 1937. And June is eight years older than her. She's eight, and uh, June is the oldest. And, and Ira was born out here. When you moved back from Milwaukee, where did you move to? We went, we moved into an apartment on 19th Street, Wisconsin Avenue. And it was a real nice apartment. We used to have one of Ray's uh, brothers or sister with us most of the time. Uh, and I think we lived there for 14 years. Have you been involved in any uh, any activities? Uh? Here? Mm -hmm. I, I try to go to all of them. Tell me what a, a normal normal week is for you right now. Oh, the weeks go fast. Uh, in the, on Monday, I try to go to language class and help teach our teacher. <laughs> uh, oh, he's are, are, you, are you a, you're one of the speakers at the language class? Yeah. Oh, when did you start that? The 1st of October. This 1st of October? Mm -hmm. Oh, you just started then? Yeah. Oh, who's, who else works with you? There's uh, Margaret Austin's wife. 
Then there was Lavinia Webster, uh, Helen Skinnerdor, and now I can't think. It's terrible when you get old. <laughs> well, that was on a Monday then. You you work on Monday to with the language. Not always. Sometimes I well, I only put in seven hours a week. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. And I can put that in any time. Okay. Then there's Lloyd's class. Once in a while, I go there in the evening, on Tuesday evening. I see. So, then I got. We get three hours over at the log house. And. I go there maybe twice a week. Then once in a while I have a couple of students come up here. What about, uh, do you go to the Methodist Church on Tuesday? Once in a while. Not the doings, just to eat. <laughs> just to eat. That's, yeah. That's the last Tuesday of the month, right? Uh, or that they I, have their big isn't meal? Isn't it Thursday? Was it on Thursday now? Oh, okay. I'm not sure. Okay, I haven't they been there have for a while. the doings all on Tuesdays. I know it must be on Tuesday. I know uh, at the end of the month they had a, they have a big meal. Have well, a, maybe that's when they take yeah, us there. I don't see, know. All right, that's Tuesday. What happens on Wednesday? Wednesday, usually I go to language class on Wednesday too in the morning, three hours. Okay, Thursday. Thursday, I usually stay home, sleep. <laughs> That's how we caught you today, right? <laughs> I, I wasn't sleeping. I just had... But you're at home today. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And, and then Friday, what happens on Friday? Uh, they have a... Oh, they have a movie and they give us popcorn. Oh. And, well, I usually get the popcorn, but I don't watch the movie. I see, I see. <laughs> What about uh, church? Are you active in the church? Uh, well, not too active. I've been there several times, but now I'm waiting for the new church coming up. Well, what, what's happening there? They're building a new church, the Mormons. Oh, over by yeah. Van Geems? Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. When is that supposed to be done? I was told, but I forgot. Okay, okay. I'm going to be 90 years old next birthday. Well, that's just a figure of speech, you know. I mean, it's, uh, <clears throat> now, it, you know, if you had a chance to to talk to the youth, the young people, yeah, what kind of advice would you give them? Oh, uh, I would tell them to listen to the Mormon religion. That would really take them out of the ditch. To me, that's what it done to Ray, my husband. Boy, he changed. He didn't drink anymore. He didn't smoke anymore. And he was he just was a good man after that. But you gotta have quite a few lessons before mm -hmm. and you've got to really want it. Is there anything I forgot that uh, give you an Indian name? Did you? They no. called you. No, they always no. called you Lydia. Huh? Yeah. 